We lived out of a suitcase for 10 years, traveling the world to build the company that we have now. But when I was seven years old, my father took his life, he shot himself, and that was a pivotal point in my journey. Can you be willing to let go of everything that you've known for something greater? These triggers that we feel in life point to the unresolved wounds underneath the surface. You can have the best mindset in the world, but if you're not keeping your physical vessel in good shape, it's hard to implement the mindset piece. On year seven, we made our first million dollars. I remember that feeling. Wow. If things Things aren't happening exactly the way you want them to. There's opportunities and blessings in that. Life is redirecting you on the path so you can ultimately have everything that you want. One of the greatest gifts that you can give to yourself is moving beyond the fears, moving beyond the self-doubt, moving beyond any insecurities or any parts of you that might tell you otherwise. If you know what you want, if you have like a desire or a direction that you want to take your life, are you in alignment? Are you living in alignment with the life that you truly want? And we are back with another absolute banger for you from LA. I've got the man here, Lucas Mack. And I've I've seen this man go from New Zealand to facilitating with Breathwork some of the biggest celebrities in the world, like Jake Paul. And mate, I've I've watched you from afar and I've seen I'm so hyped to have you here today because seeing everything you've achieved and everything you've created, manifested, however you want to term it in your life from where you've come from has been nothing short of inspiring and I know you're going to drop some absolute sauce on this audience today. <laughs> Let's go. Yeah. I'm excited for it. <laughs> I'm, 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 I'm hyped for it. I'm hyped for it. I think the um, the best, obviously everyone can who follows you on social media can see what you're doing now and obviously when you're looking at it from the outside in, mm. it just looks like, oh, you, you're smashing life and it's, and it's a sim- been a simple process. But mm. I know it's been more of a, a battle for you because you've had to overcome so many traumas, demons and everything else that you've had to get over in your own life from, from your childhood, essentially. Mm. So I think the best place to start is kind of, because a lot of people in this audience will be, will be dealing with some of them themselves, maybe not even realise it. I think the best place for us to start so we can add so much clarity in, to them is to start where, where, where you started. So give, give me a bit of an insight into growing up in New Zealand and what was going on there. Mm. Yeah, for me growing up in New Zealand, I really struggled with my sense of self and I grew up in an environment that was quite self-destructive. So I had a lot of love from mum and a lot of support from mum. Mum was like my cheerleader. She was always telling me that I could do anything that I wanted to, whatever I put my mind to. If I worked hard, I could achieve it, you know. But then dad on the other side was really self-destructive, suffering from depression and anxiety and addiction and things like that. So it was really turbulent at home. So the environment at home was quite volatile and quite intense to grow up in. And I remember from a young age just being afraid of my dad's anger and afraid to express myself and just not sure of what was going to happen next in the household, you know. And I know a lot of people grow up like that and they can relate to that. How I internalized it was kind of shutting down um, and not really expressing myself or not trusting my voice. And I was always super creative and mum would really encourage me to be creative. So I was always drawing as a kid. And when I look back on it, it was like a form of active meditation where I could just zone out and be in my own space and disconnect from everything that was happening externally and just focus on my inner world and develop my imagination. And I think a lot of creativity came from that. But when I was seven years old, my father took his life. He shot himself. And that was a pivotal point in my um, journey. Uh, it was really intense and I didn't know how to deal with it and I was an only child so I made the decision at that point in time that I was going to be the protector and, and the provider for mum at seven years old I just switched on and I was like I'm going to look after mum you know so in doing that I kind of abandoned myself and my own needs to a certain extent and I just I shoved everything down I didn't give myself permission to acknowledge how I was feeling and process what was there and I just kept moving you know, and then that pattern carried on throughout my teenage years of, you know, being really hyper self-destructive. And, you know, when you grow up in an environment when you're, where you're programmed to self-destruct, you know, I watched my grandfather self-destruct, I watched my dad self-destruct. So that was the path that I was on. At a certain point in time, I realized I was exactly where my father was. And there's two options, right? Take myself out or s- switch the path. And I decided to change things up. And I didn't know what that was going to look like or what that was going to what that was going to be, but I just knew that I needed to make a change. So. 
obviously that's a classic example of someone who's had to break a generational pattern in their life and then yeah. move and move through it but you know how when you when that was happening in your life and you said that you've had to you had to abandon yourself mm. do you think a lot of people in this in in life now are abandoning themselves when it comes to relationships, when it comes to like doing things for other people. 100%. So yeah, w- what I'm really talking about is I grew up living in survival and when we're living in survival, um, you know, living in the stress response, then our body's utilizing a lot of its internal resources just to cope and to deal with what we're experiencing. And when we're living in survival, we're conditioned by our stress response, the fight, flight, freeze or fawn response and a classic fawn response is to abandon yourself at the um, and to people please at the detriment of your own self and your own needs and your own desires. So you are ab- you abandon yourself to to please other people, and that's a way of coping in a stressful environment or growing up in a in survival. You know, so. when it comes to like breaking patterns of your past, I mean, is it is it something that you just have to? meditate into or or, or or is breath work the only way to break that pattern or how can people identify first that they've got this pattern that they need to break and then systematically put in a step-by-step process to break it over a period of time yeah well for me it came down to just looking at what I had been shoving down because it's the body that holds on to stress and tension and unprocessed emotions so for me it was more of a somatic process it came through like the darkness right at a yeah. certain point in time I realized that I wasn't in a good space. So from a young age, I suffered with panic panic attacks and a lot of anxiety and depression. And at a certain point in time, I had to really look at that and look what was underneath the surface. So for me, it was about acknowledging what was there, acknowledging my pain. And through acknowledging my pain and being honest with where I was truly at, that was where I started to liberate myself. But it was a process of like feeling my emotions, not abandoning how I was feeling, like fully being with it and self-parenting myself, a lot of inner child work, you know, showing up for the parts of me that were hurting and screaming out for my own attention because often we're looking for other people to validate how we feel, but we can give that to ourselves moment by moment. So for me, that was the process, acknowledging my pain and then giving myself the permission to move through it. So it came from accepting that is how you felt and then being radically honest about why you felt that way. 100%. Because for so many years, I totally ran away from how I was feeling. You know, I was in that classic flight response of just running away from my problems, not dealing with them. And then I'd go into the fight response where I'd lash out, I'd be defensive. I'd be, you know, just in that space of perceiving I was under attack on some level, always looking out, you know, over my shoulder, perceiving that there was threats coming at me from anywhere because I perceived that, you know, I was under attack and that was the environment that I grew up in. So I had to look at that too. I had to find safety to even feel my emotions because I realized like a part of me didn't even feel safe to face off of what was underneath the surface. So finding safety for me has been finding safety in my body, first and foremost, being able to express my emotions, process things, let them go, move beyond it, and then step into, you know, taking action and creating the life that I truly wanted. But it really came with acknowledging my pain being honest with it one of the uh, things that i've acknowledged about myself recently is that when anybody puts doubt on me or doubt on my word i get this anger come up inside of mm. me that it, it, and, I, and i know it's and i start to, i start I, I start to get agitated that someone is is like why would you say that do you know what i mean like i start mm. to get that agitation yeah and i'm trying to at the moment breathe and meditate into that so i can understand where that actually comes from yeah because i don't know if that com- i know it doesn't come at the surface level there's something a lot deeper that needs to be worked on in that yeah. i think maybe a lot of people probably go through that as well where they're boxing off emotions that they that just because they've done it so many times they think it's normal 100 percent. yeah well there's what happens to us and then there's the meaning we make of it right so i said about my dad like taking his life when I was seven years old, the meaning I made of that was like, I'm not good enough. Because I, if I was good enough, dad would have stayed around for me. So I believed on a fundamental level that I wasn't good enough. I felt abandoned 
major abandonment issues, major anger, major rage, and then that I am not enough played into every part of my life until I was willing to look at that limiting belief and and rewire it, rewrite my story, you know, which I think a lot of these things that are bubbling up to the surface, these triggers that we feel in life, point to the unresolved wounds underneath the surface. So there can be an initial trigger, like someone fucks you off, I'm angry at this because this happened, X, Y, and Z. But if we look deeper, there can be usually an unresolved wound that's there beneath the surface that these you know triggers are pointing to. So when it comes to obviously like obviously the way that you lost your dad was was, was, was horrible like thing to experience, and I can't imagine what that, that's like because I've still got both my parents, you know, which is a thankful thing. But a lot of people have lost a parent, mm. and I think that there's they carry anger towards a parent then. Yeah. from from words that they they felt that they couldn't say at the time when they're alive yeah. so how if your parent has died and mm-hmm. and and anyone in this audience has lost their parent and they're and they're really angry at that parent now how, how can they break that anger towards that parent and become peaceful with the fact that that parent was doing the best that they could in the time they're in with the knowledge that they had yeah i think it comes down to giving yourself permission to acknowledge your truth and what's really there And that could be just writing about how you're feeling and what's going on for you. It could be then expressing it, like saying things out loud, having a conversation with that parent or that caregiver, even though that they're gone in the physical, there's a part of their spirit that can still hear you, that can still be with you in this, you know, dimension that we're in. So for me, it's knowing that we are like spiritual beings having a human experience and that connection lives on. So for me, when my dad passed, I had a lot of anger and a lot of resentment and a whole lot of things I needed to work to work through. And a part of that was just acknowledging that. And then when I, you know, stepped into finding breath work, when you open up to explore a non-physical, sorry, a, a non-ordinary state of consciousness, that's when you can open up to connect to, you know, really feeling that connection with a loved one that's passed over. And you can say things that are unresolved. You can express things. You can feel get messages back that are coming through you in that space. It's a direct, you know, experience of transformation and healing. But I think in the early stages for me, it just came through just acknowledging what was there, writing things down and verbally expressing it out loud to no one, just to myself, you know, like having a conversation with life, the universe, God, just letting out my pain. And that was a way for me to process it and express it. Yeah, because you cannot create, in my opinion, when you're storing that much trauma within you at a cellular level it's a real struggle like I, I was talking to Aggie about this the other day and she and she was saying like you know when you're trying to you can have the best mindset in the world mm-hmm. but if you're not keeping your physical vessel in good shape it's hard to implement the mindset piece it's the same yeah. with what you're saying about this with breath work and processing trauma it's hard to use the modality of breath work to to create and to stuff like that when you're when you're also trying to deal with the trauma so do you have yeah. to deal with the 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 bulk amount of trauma first before you can step into creation or can you create whilst dealing with trauma i think you can create while you're dealing with trauma but you have to address the underlying issues and the stress and the tension and the unprocessed as unprocessed emotions at the same time one of the first things that happens when you're in a awakened breathwork session is you start to complete the stress response so the things that you've been through um highly charged emotional events in your life, whatever it might be, things that aren't resolved start to come to the surface to be processed, to be let go of. So there's that first, you know, completing of the stress response, feeling your emotions, letting go of all that stress and tension. And when you do that, then you start to open up or make more room for possibility and to connection with your intuition and your creative brain and to tap into creative solutions and to see beyond the binary and to tap into the third, you know, possibility or third potential, you know, we kind of, it's like the blinders are removed and we have access to more information. And we could say that information is coming from our subconscious mind. It's coming from our higher self. It's coming from, you know, all parts of us, you know, and and it's just a way that we can access our own truth. When, do you remember the first time when, was it the first time when you were breathing that this veil started to get lifted from you and you could see the more possibilities within yourself? I think it started with the opposite for me because like growing up, there was such a strong um, struggle with anxiety and panic attacks where I first noticed that I couldn't breathe 
and I was restricted and I was in that stress response from an early age and I remember getting rushed off to the hospital. Mum would uh, take me there and doctors doctors would hook me up to like ventilator machines till I could breathe again and it would happen over and over and over again. But what I realised through that process was I didn't feel safe, I felt out of control but the moment I recognised even from a little kid that when I would take these deep breaths, I didn't know anything about breath work back then but I, I remembered when I could take these deep breaths I would start to calm my system down. And when I would start to regulate myself like that, that's when I could feel more grounded and more connected to myself and feel more, find safety in my body and and be in the present moment. So I think I was learning that. And those were all like keys for later on for when I would find breath work to feel safe, to expand out and to tap in, you know, into that non-ordinary state of consciousness and explore my own inner world and explore my imagination and subconscious mind because I think the key thing is safety. If you don't feel safe to feel your emotions and if you don't feel safe to explore your own inner world, then you're not going to give yourself permission to, you know, to go in there and to get the most out of the experience. So I think it came with, yeah, first not feeling safe, then finding safety through my body and my breath and then that safety was like a doorway in to my intuition, my imagination, my subconscious and you know, connection. I think it was like for you, it's like a reconnection back with your old self because it's between, you know, five and seven, you were drawing and you were creating and you and you were stepping into that world mm. on your own and, and you're in that creation phase because you, you you didn't feel like you could create in the exterior because of what was happening with your dad. So you went you went internal and went creative and then you had to step out of that when when your dad passed away and it's kind of like for that for that gap in your childhood that's kind of when you kind of lost yourself because you had to think of so many other things outside of you but I think yeah. that's what a lot of people are going through they, they feel like they have to think of so many other things outside of themselves and then they forget themselves and they're so disconnected then they're like well actually who is who is Marie who is who who is who is Jenny you know yeah, what we I mean? lose like, ourselves we, we look we've you've lost yourself yeah um, if 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 someone's like lost themselves to bring them back on track to get them to the point where they can start to at least feel like that they're, they're, they've hit the bottom because i remember listening to tyson fury and he was saying like with in regards to his mental health when he hit that when he, when he hit that it was there was no lower he could go other than and death is in terms of he, he hit that proverbial floor mm. How how can people stop themselves if they're falling down that ladder to to before they hit the floor? How can they pick themselves back up and just shift that so they can at least allow themselves that that little bit of light to move move through it? Mm. Yeah, I think it's a recognition first and foremost what you're holding on to is holding you back. So getting clarity on what you're holding on to, what you've been through in your past that feels unresolved, shining a light on it. And as you shine a light on it and start to acknowledge it, then you can start to process it. And once you can start to process it, then you begin the process of setting yourself free from the past. It no longer weighs on you. It no longer has hold on you like it does. You are setting yourself free by acknowledging what's there. And that part of that is the emotional processing aspect of it. Part of it is just being witness and, you know, allowing yourself to move through all of the feels that come up, expressing it and just being fucking radically honest with where you're at and also what you want for your life, right? If you if you know what you want, if you have like a desire or a direction that you want to take your life, are you in alignment? Are you living in alignment with the life that you truly want or are you out of alignment? And if you are out of alignment, start with looking at all the things in your life that feel out of alignment. That's the place to start. Acknowledge your truth of where you're at and then just take away all judgment and just start one moment at a time by acknowledging what's here for you, what's there, like and under and unpack it. Start to really take like a, a deep look at it and, and not just look at it, but do something about it, you know. Be with it, sit with it, process it, move it, because it's all it, it wants to be moved. Emotions are just energy and in, in, in motion, right? And so often these stuck emotions and these stress responses that we're living in are so outdated they're just old programs that are holding us back from creating the life that we truly want but we have to acknowledge where we're at we can't bypass it we have to be with it and work through it because we're all work works in progress right and this is just part of the like the human experience so the thing i got from you there the, the, to make it really simple as well for, for everyone listening is like observe yourself 
but without the judgment of you having to judge yourself for how you're feeling and what you're moving through and why you're thinking that first and foremost yeah and i'll give you i'll give you an example like we were talking in a lift on the way up to this podcast i had to cancel a mastermind because of one of my speakers pulled out which which shut down um everything for me in terms of going to australia and moving moving um s- through that s- stage you know and i had it all planned out but after about an hour of being mad and like a bit upset and mm-hmm. feeling like oh why is this happening to me i realized on the other side of that what the opportunity gave me was it, it gave me the opportunity to stay in la longer it gave me the opportunity to create so i, I suppose what i want to pivot to really is is how people can get out of the feeling of like this is happening to me to now stepping into that we i can create something really good off the back of this situation yeah you have to be willing to move out of survival and to move into being a creator which means taking radical responsibility for your life and how you're feeling so if you feel like you're living in survival life is just happening to you right from that state you're separate from the ever-flowing abundance that's all around you you're separate from the universe life's just happening to you from that point of view you're a victim and living in victimhood consciousness then you have no control Life is just happening to you. So you have to be willing to shift out of that mindset and shift into the mindset that you are a creator. So life is constantly reorganizing itself. If things are falling away, then there's opportunities and blessings in that. If things aren't happening exactly the way you want them to, there's opportunities and blessings in that. Life is redirecting you on the path so you can ultimately have everything that you want. It might not be happening in the way that you want it to be, but can you surrender knowing that there is a higher plan playing out and can you know what you need to do within that? Like there's things that are within your control and there's things that aren't within your control. Can you surrender the things that aren't within your control and can you focus on the things that are within your control, the things that you can take action on, the things that you can do? And with doing that, that's when we step in to be being creators and we start to see ourselves as in connection with something greater and we get to play, we get to co-create and we get to step forward into creating the life that we truly want. And it's not going to always work out the way we want it to. It's not meant to. You know, a part of being here on this human experience is experiencing suffering and experiencing challenges, right? That's how we grow. That's how we learn. That's how we adapt. That's how we become better. But if we're constantly focused on the negative, then we're lowering our vibe. We're you know, we're lowering or draining our our energy and our vital life force. And if we live just constantly focused on the negative, then we're also attracting more of that because we live in an attraction-based universe. So what we're putting out there, we're going to get more of. So if we can learn to pivot our focus and to also focus on the lessons and the blessings that come from these situations that might not be happening exactly the way we want them to, then we can find the third probability we can find a creative solution we can redirect our energy and our focus we can find another path forward life is trying to redirect things right if we see it if it's happening for us then we can trust it this third probability that you speak of can you break that down so i can understand exactly what that third probability is yeah well i think for most of us we live in the binary it's this or it's that it's good or it's bad it's wrong or it's right And when we're living in the binary, it's really hard to connect to creative solutions because we we either have this or we have this, right? I can either do this or I can do this. We miss the third probability. We miss creative solutions because we're so focused on the binary. But when we start to open ourselves up to move beyond survival, to move beyond the stress response, to take conscious control of our physiology, regulate our our nervous system and our emotions and our energy through breath work or meditation or any other practice, we can start to open up to our intuition, to our subconscious mind. We can start to tune in to creative solutions that are always there, but we can miss them when we're so focused in the binary and disconnected from ultimately like our higher selves because we're, we're just living in survival. It literally reminds me of the story of the of the of the two men cutting down the tree, and one of them sharpens the axe, and one of them doesn't. And meditation, breath work, is equivalent to you sharp sharpening the axe to give you the time to be able to just cut down that tree quicker. You know, you yeah. could you could you could if you just take a little bit piece of piece of your day. We're talking twenty minutes, ten minutes, twenty minutes to an hour potentially of your day, and just actually sat with yourself and said, "What is it I truly want? 
am I going even in the same direction of my goals? Mm. You know, and it, and it's that even even if you don't meditate and you don't do breath work and you but you just take a moment to sit there in silence or you go on a walk with yourself in nature, that's the equivalent in in in, in you know it's the easiest thing in the world to do, but not many of us do it as a daily practice. And it's it's like you were saying that it's the daily rituals that you have to get right. If you're not getting the daily rituals right, you can't expect the results. Yeah, alignment happens through daily ritual. And daily ritual could look like anything, right? It's whatever resonates with you. For me, daily ritual is breath work, meditation, journaling, cold plunge, exercise, You know, making sure I'm on top of my nutrition and I'm putting good things into my body and making sure that I'm aware of my self-talk and how I'm speaking to myself on the daily Am I comparing myself to other people? Am I fucking lowering my vibe and draining my energy by, you know, just that inner critic that can come in and, and take me off path or, you know, just lower my vibe in general? Being being aware of that and being willing to create that pattern interference in the moment. Like if I am in a funk, if I am having a negative day, if I do feel low, if I have some things happen in my life, yeah, give myself permission to process what's there, acknowledge if there's anger, resentment, if I feel frustrated or sad, whatever's there, yes, acknowledge it, process it, but then don't wallow in it, move beyond it, you know, create momentum, like, and I do that by, by that pattern interference, which for me is the breath work, the meditation, the exercise, taking action, you know, just being willing to move beyond whatever I'm feeling and not kind of stay stuck in it, because I think for a lot of people, they They'll just wallow in things or stay stuck in things for a very, very long time. And when you're not looking at the past and doing that deeper work of healing your relationship with the past and everything that you've been through, then we're conditioned through the lens of the past. Like our limbic system, which is the part of our brain that processes memory and emotion, it processes memory and emotion in a non-linear space. So it processes the past, the present, and the future simultaneously happening now. So if we've been through a lot of negative things in our life, if life hasn't worked out the way we want it to, if we've experienced trauma and hardship, and we haven't done our you know, due, dil- due diligence to process those things and move beyond them, then that's the lens in which we perceive the now. Because right, that's how yeah. the limbic system processes things. It overlays things into the present moment. So if you have like these... Um, all of these reference points for in your life of how life didn't work out for you and all these things that went wrong, then if you're not processing that, then you're going to find more of that in the present moment. And there's a part of your brain called the reticular activating system, RAS, which is like a filtering system between the conscious and the unconscious mind, which sole job is to find more of what we focus on. So if you've been programmed to find the negative, then guess what? You're just going to find more negative things and you're going to be right. Because there's always negative things to find. There's always negative things that can take you out of alignment or take you off your path if you let it. But when you let it, you realize that you're giving those things have power over you. You're allowing those things to have power over you, which means you, you're in survival. You feel like a victim. You feel like life yeah. is just happening to you. But you can shift that and step into being a creator, which means you have to take radical responsibility for your life and your actions and how things are. And you have to be willing to pivot. Right, you have to be willing to do things in a different way, which a lot of people aren't willing to do. And and the most beautiful things can, can be created on the back of the pivot. I mean, I'm I'm excited for the next thirty days of what can be created while I'm out in LA mm. because of like this is a redirection for me. This is this you know I wasn't I was, I was only meant to be here a week. Now I'm here another four. It's like what can be done, what can be achieved whilst I'm here. Yeah. It's, it's not about thinking of like you've lost this money over here, these refunds got to happen over here, all that kind of stuff. Just that's just how it happens. You just yeah. do it, you let it go, and you and and you don't dwell in it because in past me would have dwelled on that, would have yeah. would have let it sink into me. I wouldn't have been able to process that in an hour. That would have took me weeks, months. I, w- I probably would have held on it for another year. Yeah, it's like you know, it's like as you go through your self work journey. Mm. Your modality to heal and be radically honest with yourself gets better and better and better. And as you refine that art and you refine that skill, you start to be able to move through things like this. Like if a relationship's not for you and it has to break up, it's like, yeah, that's nasty and horrible. And you're going to feel that and you're going to feel hurt and it's going to it's going to hurt you. But it doesn't 
you're like, okay, well, if if that isn't right, then there has to be something else that's right for me. Like, do you know what I'm saying? So it's, yeah. you, you get the opportunity to look at things from a whole different lens by working at that like one percent daily, don't you? Yeah, you have to be willing to let go of the old to create the new. And a lot of people fucking hold on for dear life and they're not willing to let go of the old. But in order to create the new, we have to put more time and energy into creating the new than we do keeping the old alive. What do you do though? Because if you're in a relationship and the person you're in the relationship with is going through their own traumas and their own struggles and their own processes, but they're on a different timeline to you, but obviously you potentially like them, like what, what do you do in that, those situations? Because I see a lot of relationships and I've been in those relationships where you're at this spiritual on this spiritual path. They're 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 at this level spiritually. You both like each other, you both want the best for each other, but but you you you, you just you just can potentially be triggering triggering each other. How mm. do you how, how do you process with that? Yeah, I think relationships are so challenging at times and I think you have to just be radically honest if it's in alignment or if it's not. And can you unconditionally love the person for where they're at and take away all judgment of where they're at and just love them for where they're at? Because a lot of people will try to change people and you know that's never the way to do things because ultimately people will change when they're ready to change, not when you tell them to change. So it's, it's a case then in, in relationships, it's like you've got to be accepting of where your partner is at and you've got to expect them to accept you where you're at yeah and and understand then that but that both parties like i said before are trying to do the best they can in the time they're in with the information that they have essentially 100 percent, yeah and then you have to decide for yourself is the relationship in alignment for you and you know it's a case-by-case thing but i think it comes down to radical acceptance of yourself and your own shadows and taking away you know, as much judgment as you can from the other person because we love to judge, we love to project. As human beings, we love to make the other people wrong and the ego will always kind of love to be righteous or love to be right or love to be above, yeah. you know. So it's like can we look at all of that and, and bring it back to the heart because when we're living in, su- separ- you know, survival, we're living in that separated state. We're constantly right. perceiving threats. We're under attack. We're, we're defensive where, you know, we're just not in our best place of, you know, being able to respond in a way that's from love and from the heart because we feel under attack or there's a threat on some level and that person, the partner, might represent that that very thing that we feel threatened by. Where does where does disappointment come from? Because it's, it's when you're saying that, the word came into my head um, as a topic to speak about because I think a lot of people are walking through life disappointed with how their actual life is, disappointed at how their relationship's working out, disappointed with the opportunities that they've got. Where does this inherent disappointment come from? Mm. Well, for me, what the first thing that comes up is expectation. I think we have all these expectations that we place upon other people, that we place upon ourselves and life and how things should be. But all of that's a story, right? The present moment is the present moment. What's happening is what's happening. Can you accept what's happening? And then if you're in the creator, if you're in the driver's seat, you can take control of that. You can do your part. You can shift things. You can pivot. You can take aligned action. You can start to move your life in a different direction based on what you want, your desires, your goals, your dreams. But take away the expectation and just look at what is actually true and what's happening right here in the present moment because that's when you can really acknowledge like what's going on. And then you can do something about it. But I think for so many of us, we have these huge expectations that we put on other people. And then when someone doesn't live up to those expectations or they don't meet those expectations, then we feel let down, we feel hurt, we feel disappointed. And I think a part of that is, you know, it's us giving our power away. Because when we're actually in our power, we don't need to rely on other people or the external for our own you know, feeling of being in alignment or happiness or joy or to feel like we're creating the life that we truly want. Because all of that is you know, first and foremost coming from the external, coming from ourselves, and then we go out there and make it happen. But it's not reliant on other people and other people's actions. Like we can't control other people and what other people do, right? But we can control ourselves and how we show up and the rest we have to surrender. Quick one for you guys. This podcast is sponsored by contentremover.com. As many of you are probably aware, 
I set up contentremoval.com in 2017 to help people remove all forms of online content. And I've looked after some of the biggest names and brands in the world doing it. And I would love to help you if you're struggling. If you're struggling to remove images, videos, search results, fake accounts, or anything online, go to contentremoval.com and we'll help you today. I think all of our unhappiness in life comes from the, the, the trying to control the things that we can't control and, and really not focusing on controlling the things that we actually can. Yeah. We, could, we can control what we consume, both in media, in food, in water, or, and, and what we drink. We can control what we consume. We can control other areas of our life that's, that's sovereign to us. But what we, what we can't control, we seem to, as humans, want to gravitate towards trying to control that. When there's so many other modalities here that we're missing in the pursuit of trying to control this over here. So it's like we have to flip the script on what we're trying to control in our lives to allow us to even just be whole so we can move forward, essentially. Yeah, I think it comes back to that conversation of what, what is within your control and what is not within your control. And really being honest with that and looking at that and then, you know, taking action on what is within your control and surrendering the rest. And that can be easier said than done because a lot of us, say, for example, might have family members out there that are struggling with addiction or mental health issues. You can't control that. And if you try and change that person when they're not ready to change, then you're just going to create more suffering for yourself and that other person. And that person will only change when they're ready to change. And your expectation of them, you know, having to be a certain way or to do certain things or to take certain actions that they're not ready for is only going to create more misery and more suffering. So what is within your control and what is outside your control? And then surrendering that and taking action on what you can. It it really is like operating through a totally different lens to what society teaches people. The, the lens that we're taught to look at the world and, and to look at life at this moment in time is is, is all puts us in this fight and flight mode. Yeah. And then we're, we're, we're trying to fight the world. And, and you cannot create in a world that you're trying to battle, mm. you know, because you're, you're actively trying to battle, which means your present moment is taken in the fight, not in the fact of just sitting there being present and understanding like this is how it is. But I can create so much more on the back of it. When was the first time you fully understood the power of creation for your personal self? Because there must have been a breakthrough moment where you thought, wow, I've created this fantastic opportunity. And now I, now I, because the first time you see it, in my opinion, you can't unsee it. So when was that first time for you? It was really young, I think 13 years old. So my dad and my uncles were tattooed. um, And I remember one of the gifts before my dad, um, Took his life as he gave me a skateboard and the skateboard had like a skull and crossbones on it and I was so fucking hyped on it I just loved that skateboard and um I remember that planted a seed in my subconscious and I remember when I was really young my my dad's brother my um my uncle would take me out to Hells Angels like rallies and I'd go on the back of his Harley Davidson you know, eight, nine years old, and we'd go out to these uh, these rallies and we'd camp out there. And I remember buying all these fake tattoos and sticking them on me. And I remember walking around and getting so much attention and love from everyone at like eight, nine years old with all these tattoos on me. And I remember that moment. I was like, okay, when I grow up, I'm going to be heavily tattooed. That was one of the decisions I made. When I grow up, I'm going to be a tattoo artist. When I grow up, I'm going to be wealthy. When I grow up, I'm going to have a great relationship with money because we didn't have money growing up. I made these key pivotal decisions and then all of those things, you know, came true. I created those things. So. That's, a, that's, that's beautiful. I mean, the tattoos that you have on your body they must all carry meaning to you. And obviously by growing up with a uncle and a dad, that are, are, were, they, were they affiliated? No, my uncle was, but he wasn't patched up he was just that was just his friends and family vibes so. but 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 it's but it's it's quite a lot isn't it to be um to see that kind of lifestyle from an early age it's, it's good. for me it was exciting to be honest like yeah i was around it and i didn't really see the negatives of it from a young age i just saw i saw obviously my dad self destruct my dad rode motorcycles and i saw the behaviors behind the scenes but they were more behind closed doors 
But when we went out into public situations, say like these, you know, rallies and different things that were happening, it was fun. It was exciting. It was really awesome for me. So I think I was programmed from a young age that like that was family and tattoos. People with who were heavily tattooed were like good people to be around. You know, they lifted me up. They made me feel good. Where I think a lot of people in society have the opposite, you know, kind of programming. So. Have you found sometimes your your look and your tattoos have got you judged and, and shut doors on you as well? I'm not sure about the shutting doors and I'm sure that's happened, but I'm not consciously aware of it. The judgment, yes, 100%. I feel the judgment every single day, but I don't take it on board personally because I know as human beings, we all judge each other and that's just a part of the human experience. So when I walk out the door, yeah, I can feel the looks. I can feel people kind of look me up and down and judge me and stuff like that. But I think as soon as people hear me speak or they have an interaction with me or they're with me on a one-on-one you know, level, then it shifts everything. So I think I've been able to open up a lot of doors because of being so heavily tattooed and I stand out and it's given me an opportunity to break norms and break stereotypes. And if someone perceives you some way in a certain type of way, then I get to, you know, bring my truth forward, which is like, you know, yes, I'm heavily tattooed, but one of my greatest superpowers is that I'm here to support people to create the life that they truly want and to release the blocks and let go of anything that's in the way of that. And that's what I truly care about. And from that point of view, that's how I live my life. And it's not about the money. It's not about the clout. It's not about working with famous people. Like all of those things are really awesome. And it's a part of, you know, the work, putting myself out there. But at the core of it, I just love to fucking help people. And it's my favorite thing to do. So I find so much joy in it, you know. And yeah, I'm just so thankful that I have this. And I think the path that I've been on is just, it's been the greatest blessing because it's, it's developed me through all of it, you know, for everything that I've been through. And even with my dad passing, like I didn't follow in his footsteps. I had to go out there and, you know, find my own way, find my own path. And yeah, it was a rocky road, but we got there, you know, we found my, I found my way and I didn't have any positive role models growing up. Not really, except for my uncle, you know, who would support me, but he wasn't in my life that much. But other than that, I had to, you know, become my own role model, become my own superhero, like figure this shit out myself. There was no one coming to save me. So it's like. And on top of that, obviously at 16 years old, you you, you meet this woman that you're obviously is now your missus mm. and have been for years. And how much of a change was that for you? Because obviously you've been in a relationship so long, traveling the world together for 10 years, facilitating breath work in all these different countries, touching thousands of lives and helping thousands more beyond that through social media. Like what's, what's that been like to not only have to like, you know, dial in with your person so young, but also then the challenges that go with traveling around the world together whilst you're also learning how to live with each other, how you, how to be with each other, everything else that goes with it. Yeah. Well, we both grew up in environments that were quite dysfunctional. Um, so when, when we met, we were able to tell things that we'd never told any other person. We just opened up about the things that we'd been through and the things that we'd experienced. So we kind of created safety within our relationship and we wanted to grow. We wanted to move out of the environment that we were in. We didn't know how or what how that was what that was going to look like. But I remember we made the transition pretty early. Like I had an apartment, and um, Hella lived with me, and all my friends were drug dealers, and you know, just there was a lot of like craziness going on. And um, I remember we made the decision that we wanted to stop drinking, and we weren't going to take drugs. We were just kind of. You know, we wanted to focus on ourselves and we wanted to grow. So I remember instead of uh, going out partying, we'd go to the library on a Saturday night while all my friends were having a party in this apartment at, you know, at my home and just going wild. We'd go to the library, we'd just kick it, we'd start reading personal development books and we'd just start tuning into what, what do we want? What's the life that we want to create? And, you know, that was the journey. And through that journey, we just started working deeply on ourselves and everything that we'd been through and finding healing, working with different therapists and alternative healing modalities and everything that we could really find that would support us and help us. We were willing. We were into it, you know, 
And I remember there was a point in time where all my friends would really judge that. They wouldn't understand it, you know. But, you know, 10 years later, it's come full circle and they see how I've been able to shift and the moves I've been able to make. And now, you know, they're into the work too. So, Because it's, it's a beautiful thing for me to see because I know how long you've worked to get to where you get to. It's like when I started this podcast, I knew it was a 10-year game straight yeah. away. Like, But the only reason I knew it was a 10-year game in this instance is, is because I knew I'd found my purpose. Mm. So how can, do you think that more people can find their purpose like me and you truly have? Because I, because I know breathwork is something you'll facilitate until, until you die. And I know that um, communication and podcasting is something that's going to be a part of my life until I die. Mm. Um, there's a lot of people that DM me and say, Frankie, I'm, I'm, I'm a, I'm a carpenter. I'm this and that, and I don't want to do this. I want to do this, this and this and this. How would you, uh, how would you facilitate allowing those people to find their purpose a little bit quicker? Yeah, it's if you could do anything, what would you do? Powerful question. Yeah, if you could do anything, what would you do? You know, if you took took away all of the conditioning or the, or the stories, and if you just start to tune into what brings you joy, what brings you fulfillment. When you do it, do you feel on purpose when you're doing it? Yeah, and I think. Everyone has their something and it's about just finding whatever resonates with you, you know, and allowing that to shift too, because, you know, passions change and they grow and they evolve as we're growing and evolving too. So don't be willing to let go of an old passion. Like you said, say someone who's a carpenter right now that's tuning in that once really loved that and they really worked hard to perfect their craft and build their business and you know, that was a part of their personal development journey. And they just get to a point where they realize, hey, the work that I'm in, it, it no longer s- fulfills me. It no longer lights so, me so. up. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Can you be willing to pivot? Can you be willing to let go of everything that you've known for something greater? Yeah. And that's challenging and that's hard, especially when it, we talk about, you know, having to step away from security, financial security, and, you know, a routine and a lifestyle that you've created and everything that comes with that and be willing to step into the new, right? That's a process and it's an unfoldment of stepping into the person that you know that you that you came here to be moment by moment. But first, it's about getting clarity on, yeah, what lights you up? What brings you joy? What are you passionate about, you know? And, and be willing to step forward on that path. You don't have to have it all figured out. You know, what's the next action step that you can take to bring you closer to that? And then from there, of giving yourself permission to invest in yourself, to believe in yourself, to trust the plan, to know that you fucking have got this 100% to get rid of any of that self-doubt, to get rid of any of the bullshit or the negativity or the projections from other people and just to stay focused on your lane and know that, yeah, it might be a 10-year journey. So what? Let's get it, you know, let's go after it. Let's make it happen. I I think it's more beautiful when you accept it's a 10-year journey. Mm. If it happens faster, cool. If it takes a few years longer, cool. But just to, if you think to yourself at the start, if I wouldn't do this for 10 years, why do it for a day is how I frame things. Because if you don't do, if you don't look at it like that, I don't see how in my life I could move much much forward Mm. because everything I look at is a long-term game with long-term people yeah if you when once I start breaking out of that it's like who am I doing this for then because it's obviously not for it's obviously not for you if it's not a 10-year game yeah it's it's for something else like yeah you'll get a dm like you know should I should I do drop shipping or should I do something else for for money I'm like mate like that's not that's the wrong question you're Mm. asking the wrong question You've not sat with yourself in silence or in meditation or in breath work. You've not allowed, you, you've not journaled about this. You've not, you've not, yeah. be, you've not allowed yourself time to think. Yep. And I think if more people allow themselves time to think about what it is they actually want to create, how they want to turn up to the world, how do you want to be? And what, I mean, one of the things that I do regularly with myself is like, okay, who is Frankie Lee now? Who does he want to be on this other side of the page of the journal? Mm. And it's like, I, I look at the disparity between where I am and, and where I want to go. And then I kind of work out, okay, how do I bridge the gap? And it's the bridging of the gap that it's yeah. like, you don't have to know everything. Like no. if I said to you, right, I want to be a Hollywood actor. I don't have to know exactly how I'm going to get in an alias film today, but I could start 
oh, maybe I, maybe I should go to an acting class. Yeah. It's that step. It's, it's, it's taking that first step, isn't it, Lucas? Yeah, you have to be willing to go all the way in on plan A. And like you said, with plan A, you don't need to have it all figured out. You just need to know your next step. What's the next move? What's the next action step that you can take? But fuck plan B. You have to be willing to go all the way in on plan A and commit to your goals, commit to your dreams. And that means being willing to let go of the old to create the new. And that's where things can get tricky, right? Because that's what our dream life requires. It requires us to let go of everything that is not in alignment with that goal, with that vision. And that's our behaviors, the way we're showing up, our coping mechanisms, our lifestyle, certain things that we've become accustomed to that are our normal ways of being that don't actually align with that goal, that dream or that vision. We have to be willing to look at all of that and, and move beyond it for something greater. Well, if you if we just go back to that and that um, mastermind example, it's like I was fully I was fully in, you know, thinking, let's do this mastermind. I'd sold tickets and everything. But the universe found a way to shake that out, cancel my speaker, mm. and you know move that out, move that out of the way. So even if you you can't, as far as I'm concerned, you can't do what's not in your destiny path. It has to it gets shaken out or it gets moved about. And yes, there's sometimes you have to feel pain because you don't want to let it go. But what's coming on the other side of you letting it go is something a lot greater, so much greater, so much greater. And can you put your focus on that? Can you put your focus on what's coming? And if you knew that it was coming. Can you prepare for it like it's coming? Can you get ready for it? Can you step into it? Because that's what's happening, right? We're preparing for what's coming. And if you know without a doubt that it's on its way, you don't know how, you don't need to know how, you don't need to know the timing. All you need to know is are you in alignment with it? Are you living in alignment? Are you showing up and preparing for like it's happening? And then guess what? Reality starts to catch up. This is exactly how I feel about LA because it's like you know, the 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 day, three days ago I met um, John Kennedy, the the day after yesterday I did I did um, I trained legs in the gym with Andrew Huberman, and then today I woke up and I thought oh I'm going to meet Arnold Schwarzenegger today just a thought in my head just came up, mm-hmm. and then I literally go down the gym and I meet Arnold Schwarzenegger yeah. like so it's like <laughs> it's like this is this this is the power of 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 putting yourself in the environment and putting yourself in the driving seat of your own life. You know, yeah. you've got to be willing to take a step forward and you're not always going to have the, you're not always going to have all the money you want. You're not always going to have all the, all the, you know, the, the with this podcast, you know, sometimes they're filmed, filmed in Airbnbs like this. Mm-hmm. Sometimes, you know, they might be in a studio somewhere. It just, it just is what it is, but you've got to just be willing to just take every step towards this, this action. Yeah, 100%. And it's what you said about like being in a vibrational alignment with your desires and then you go out there and you meet people that you want to meet. You know, I think that comes down to being living in an attraction-based universe and where we're in a vibrational match, then, you know, the universe, God's source will start to open up these doors, these opportunities, these synchronicities, and we get to say yes and, and step through and, you know, show up for ourselves along the way. And I think when we're not, things aren't moving right, things aren't going the way we want them to, when things are slow, there's not the opportunities, we're not you know, creating our goals, we're not in alignment with things. I think a lot of the time it's because we're not in a vibrational match for what we want, there's more work to do, and we're, we're in a holding pattern. We're in this vibrational holding pattern, and we need to start to shift that to move beyond it. And yeah, yeah again be willing to let go of the old to create the new and just to step forward it literally is about like you say the words surrender you have to be you have to surrender to your greater self yeah so it's, it, it, there there is a greater self than the you listening to this podcast right now yeah and whether you're driving to work or whether, whether you're listening to this on your morning walk or wherever you are in the world there's not there's not one of us including me if i listen back to this podcast that could say in this moment that we're ever at our peak. We there's always more that can come from us. It's yeah, just there's like, always new levels. There's always new levels you can unlock. There's new doors yeah. to unlock. Yep. And it's just like, okay, what are you willing to sacrifice and what pain are you willing to feel yep. with inside yourself to unlock them new levels? One hundred percent. That's it. What are you willing to sacrifice? What are you willing to let go of? Because as you let go of the old, you make room for the new. You make room for what's coming. And if you're keeping yourself stuck in that limited way of being, 
that coping mechanism or that behavior or showing up in a way that doesn't align with what you actually want, then you have to be willing to take radical responsibility for that. And when you do, then life starts to shift. You know, I think that's where a lot of people get stuck. They get stuck feeling like they don't know how to create a shift and they don't know how to change their life. But each and every single one of us has the ability to shift our focus and to create positive changes in our life. We just have to look at what's not in alignment and be willing to shift it, be willing to change it. And that can be easier said than done for a lot of people because we can be so addicted to the stress, the drama, the coping mechanisms, the things that are keeping us stuck at that you know limited way of being that's not in alignment with actually what we truly want. But the moment we are willing to surrender that and we're willing to sacrifice and let go of all of those old things, then life starts to shift and it truly does. And I always like to say that our higher self speaks through us through the voice of our intuition. So a lot of us have been so disconnected from our intuition because we're living in that stress response. We're living in survival. We feel separate from the universe. But when we start to slow things down and we start to go within and connect to our inner world and we start to pay attention to how life is redirecting things, the signs that are showing up in our life, which there's signs for all, all of us, right? We can just miss them because we're so busy focused on how things should be, but we're not paying attention to what's really going on and what life is trying to show us. But when we slow down, we take a moment to really tune in, to tap in with what's happening, then our intuition will speak to us and it will guide us. And when you trust that and you go out there and you take aligned action on your intuition, again, things start to move in a different way because you're no longer operating just within the limits of the analytical thinking mind. You're starting to open up to connect to beyond your five senses and you're starting to move with intuition and move with passion and move with instinct and move with you know that inner knowing that just knows the path that you should be on and knows the moves that you should be making and is in alignment with that. And I think from that position, it's like, yeah, that's where real life miracles start to unfold and, and and a miracle is a shift in perception right because a lot of us have been living in fear and separation and survival and we could s- say a miracle is like shifting into possibility shifting into love shifting out of that place of feeling stuck to moving into a place of feeling limitless right that's a miracle and that's available to anyone tuning in right now but you have to be willing to sit with what is and to move through the discomfort and to move beyond the coping um, strategies of you know the things that you've been doing that aren't working and aren't in alignment with you want with what you want move out of the comfort zone be willing to be gritty know that things are going to be challenging they are going to be hard but that's a part of it right and we move when we move through it you know moment by moment and we look for you know how we can win the day and how we can do our best moment to moment we put our focus on the things that are working out and the things that are right then we start to raise our vibe we start to tap into this elevated state of just believing in ourselves and knowing it's possible and when we move from that place and take action from that place we have such a different lived experience from someone who's focused on the negative who's focused on what's not working out who is bitching and moaning and complaining about life and you know feels like a victim that's a very different lived experience it's about taking yourself out of the logical brain and into the creative space where you can start to create these miracles that you speak of where you know and a miracle a miracle may be just you going from feeling shit and judgmental about yourself and your life to to not feeling that every day maybe you only yeah. feel that one day a week well that 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 is a massive miracle in your life because you've just transformed six days of every week of your life i mean how how powerful is that yeah and you free up so much space and energy within yourself because if you're just constantly focusing on the negative and what's not working out what we put our focus on expands and the moment you turn, you shift your focus on all the things that are working out and you process all the frustration and the anger and the sadness and whatever's there, you start to open up space to connect to possibility. And from that space of connecting to possibility, that's where creative solutions, that's where insights and clarity can come through. And all your own answers come from with you, from within. Like, you know, we like to put our focus on everything externally and, you know, ask other people for advice. But really, we have a connection to our internal guidance system that's always there, that's wanting to guide us, and we just have to take the time out to tap in, to listen, to be quiet, to sit with ourselves, to journal, to reflect, to look at life, and 
yeah, take action on it. That's what happens. A lot of people ask other people um, questions and advice and guidance. And if you're doing that week in, week out, you, 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 you kind of disrupting your own relationship with self. So like, I want to take this moment in the podcast for every single one of you, just to, as a, as a kind of action step from this podcast is today, just let go of something in your life that's not serving you anymore. Whether that is closing your wardrobe, have a clear out, whether that's something that's occupying mental space that shouldn't be in your your mind, whether that's a conversation you should have had five years ago, like have these conversations, have do, shift something today. Just just take, because in my mind, with podcasts and stuff like that, there's no point listening to a podcast like this and not taking any action. So if you could just let go of something from your life that isn't serving you, I think that would be a real powerful statement of why you've listened to this today. Yeah, what's the next action step that you can take that can move you closer towards your goals, your vision, or your dreams? Whatever it is that you want to create, what's the next action step that you can take? Yeah, I love that. Go out there and take it. I love that. I think that's I think that's good for in terms of action steps and moving people forward. Now, obviously, I want to talk about what you've created in your life because obviously now coming now into your environment and seeing the people that you know and, and the and the circles that you're moving in talk to me about obviously one of the key key pivotal points i think was a shift for you is when you when you came out here and you started to work and align yourself alongside jake paul and and that kind of stuff was that was that a pivotal moment for you yeah there's been many pivotal moments i think the first one was deciding that we wanted to be here in la um, making the move out here which was a big, huge thing, you know, to come out from originally being from New Zealand. We were living in Bali at the time yeah, in Indonesia, um, but we decided that we were wanting to come out here and to operate our business out here, which was a, a huge shift for us, you know, but we had to trust that. And we didn't know again how it was going to happen because it's not like you can just make that happen. There's a whole process that you've got to go through, you know. So that process was a huge one. But when we came out here, we trusted the plan and it felt like a stretch. It felt like, it's good. Ooh, it's good. yeah, we it's were good. doing things that we'd never done before. And we put ourselves in a totally different environment. And like you said, what came from that was some really amazing opportunities. And then all we had to do is say yes and step into them. And um, it's been an unfolding of all these different opportunities that have just happened through putting ourselves in this environment from, you know, empowering people, from creating, you know, our company Awaken Breathwork and by working with thousands of people all around the world and bringing it out here. Well, it's, it's a testimony to what you do because as someone who's lived in Australia for, for eight years of eight and a half years of his life, and I understand that New Zealand's a similar type of culture. It's, it's like to, to, to go from that way, you're where you're smashing it in, in Australasia and, and, and Bali and that scene where you can operate and, you can you can get to the highest of highest levels there, but that's nothing compared to getting into the American market. And then to yeah. take it from there and to bring breath work into the American market the way that you have here and and kind of like attract into your life the 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 people that can actually help you connect with more people. It's just that's an amazing thing. And I, I think you'd have had to have challenged a lot of limiting beliefs in that journey to 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 move from Bali to LA. I think there, there must have been can you remember some of the limiting beliefs that you had in your mind at that time that you kind of had to break through? Yeah, for me, my limiting beliefs have always kind of been the same old patterns, you know, that will rear their heads up. Which like a is, doubt, like a doubt. Yeah, I'm not enough. I'm not right. good enough. You know, I don't have what it takes. Um, those, are, those were the main ones, you know, but moment by moment with doing the work, then those subconscious programs no longer run the show. I'm aware of them when they come up, but I don't listen to them. I don't pay attention to them. I'm like, I witness you, but I'm not going to allow you to, you know, sh run how I, how I operate and how I show up. So moment by moment, I guess it's been a process of unfolding too. Like when we first got big opportunities to work with different, say, athletes or celebrities or whoever it might be, for me, it was really exciting. So I think that excitement of knowing my purpose and knowing what I was going to be supporting them with, because I like to dial in with every client that I work with. I really dial in to exactly what they've been through, their stress responses, their traumas, their childhood, where they're at, their limiting beliefs, whatever it might be. 
I kind of map things out and I identify patterns. So in identifying those patterns, I get to know what I'm working with and I get to know the breakthroughs that I'm going to be supporting them with. And for me, that's one of my most exciting things to do. So if those old limiting beliefs came up for me during that process, I'm not good enough, I'm not worthy, then that was just a part of the process. And we, yeah. we took action anyway. We moved forward anyway. And um, the excitement and the momentum of being able to support people and to create those shifts for people, that for me, the proof is in you know the results that you get people. And because what we do is a direct experience of transformation and healing. I get to witness it unfolding before my eyes. I know that I'm not healing my clients. I know that my clients are the source of their own healing. I'm just holding a space for them and they're doing the work on themselves. And I get to be a witness to that. And when I see people, you know, thousands of people transform their lives, have breakthroughs, let go of unexpressed emotions, work through trauma, tap in and create a life that they truly desire. Fuck. It builds so much like confidence and so much life force within me and so much drive to just keep going and wanting to get this work out to millions of people just because we're so powerful as human beings and for so long we've been underestimating or we we just haven't known how truly powerful we are to create whatever it is that we want you know and when we remove those blocks then life starts to open up in miraculous ways so when i see that unfolding in front of my eyes with my clients it's my favorite thing to do, you know, and it, it takes away all of those limiting beliefs. It's like, it just bypasses everything, you know, cause I get to see how powerful we truly are. And you get to see and feel the ripple of the waves of energy that you create in the world, which is, which is a great thing. I mean, I, I find that, you know, when you get a DM, you might be having a bad day and you get a DM saying, Oh, you know, Frankie, I've been listening to your podcast for X amount of time. And it's just like that. It's like, and, and it's done this, this and this in my life. It's like, well, you get that, you, you it helps to realign you and reassert that you're doing this for the right reason. Yeah. And you're actually making a difference, even though, yeah, your difference might be, you're doing thousands of lives at the moment. You might want to do millions of lives. Uh, you know, m me, I always want to touch more people and help more people through it. But it's like, hold on a minute. Like if, if, if even if, even if each piece of content you ever created, just, just change one person's life, took one person away from feeling like that and, to make them feel this much better. Yeah. It's it, it, when you actually break it down across the course of your life, when you're putting out one piece of content a day, that's thousands of lives in, on its own. No, like, that's what it was for us when we first started. When we first started to run events around the world, we didn't have a following. We didn't have anyone that we were like, you know, we couldn't sell out events. We were doing events in all through the States, Europe, New Zealand, Australia. We didn't have a following. And breathwork at that time you know, I'm talking nine years ago, wasn't a modality that too many people were interested in. It was a little bit fringe and on the outside, especially the work that we do, which is supporting people, you know, to heal through the power of breath work. That wasn't a really known thing back then. There was like some OGs in the game that had been holding it down for a long time. But when you went to these facilitator trainings, most people were above you know, 50 years old in the trainings. I remember Heller and I were like the youngest people within all these trainings that we were going to. And at that point in time, we just trusted the plan and we knew that we needed to get this out into the world. So we invested in ourselves. We backed ourselves. We said, yeah, let's go out on a world tour. It doesn't matter if only one person shows up to our like events that we're going to put on. We won't cancel them because it's not about the money. It's not about the money. This is about us going out there and starting to like create community and you know, make people aware of this work. And that's what we did, bro. We set out and we did our first world tour. This is nine years ago. And we just started to slowly, you know, hustle and, and get the work out there. And I remember like it would be the night before an event and we might have sold two tickets. And I remember we'd get in our DMs and we'd just start DMing people. Hey, we're in Germany. We're running this event tomorrow. Would you want to come? We'll gift you a ticket. You know, we would just start to create awareness and it wasn't about the money. It was, a create, it was about the impact that we would create, you know. And at the time, we might have like 10 people in our events and then that would build to like 20, then 30, then 40, then 50, then 60, then 100, then 200, you know. And it just kept creating momentum. But it was really about us being willing to go all the way in on our passion and not being so caught up in the money and just allowing ourselves to 
move forward knowing that it was about the impact and eventually that would come around because you know we're in this contract with with the universe right a lot of us feel like where we get paid for the things that we do in life but really it's not about the money you know money is a byproduct of when we do, when we're living our dharma when we're passionate about what we do money will come from that you know when we're living in alignment then money will come from that so that's the way i've always looked at it and that served me and it's been one of the greatest blessings and now we're here in you know the states running these events and getting this work out here and again it's just it's all an unfolding process and it's just happening and we just say yes i i fully resonate with what you're saying there and it's 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 mental because i've took this podcast around the world for the last nearly four years um and you know at some points in time you're thinking to yourself you know where's the money going to come from to fund all this is it always going to have to come from this this and this and this you know or out of my personal pocket from my from my businesses it's like you know but the money the money and the circumstances and the podcasts and the guests and everything just all seems to to float into place and it all it all it all just works out in divine timing yeah it does i mean i mean we, me and you and Menadu, we we missed we missed this podcast it we that we meant to do in dubai yeah but but because we both we both i went one way you went the other and we kind of missed each other mm. but it's like you know we've seen we've had conversations me and you since that i feel were meant to be had before we did this to mm. make it more impactful for everyone listening right now mm. so it's like i just i'm just peaceful with the fact of it's you know everything every every conversation you have everything that's happened to you all this traveling all these years you spent on the road with hella you and her just traveling around doing these events 10 people five people 100 people who cares it's like mm it's all facilitated you to be able to like now, you know, help the Jake Pauls of the world and help people and and that expand your reach. So you can help even more people. Yeah. That's the goal that I always get a lot of like slack from people when I work with celebrities, people are like, how are you, why are you working with them? How could you do that? Because people perceive them in a certain light. And my goal is I'm here to like support to shift culture. Right. Like I want to create getting awakened breath work out to millions of people because Awaken Breathwork supports people with their mental health. It supports them to, with their health and well-being. It supports them to heal the past, to step into the future, to regulate the nervous system, to release stress and tension. It helps with so many areas of life. So my goal is to get this out to millions of people all around the world. Working with celebrities who have, you know, the reach of millions of people is one of the quickest ways that I can start to bring awareness to that. Plus I fuck with a lot of people, you know, that I work with. I genuinely fuck with them. Like they're awesome people besides what you see on, you know, social media is not always what you get. We're so quick to judge people and we're so quick to tear people down because we see a certain headline or we see them in a certain light, but we're not seeing the full human, you know, we're kind of just boxing them into our own, uh, prejudices and judgments and projections you know so yeah for me one of the things that I love to do is to support high level people with whatever they're navigating because it's so much fun and I get to level up through that process too because I get to tap in with what they're creating and what they're doing and I get to see where they're at and that supports me to spiral up and level up you know to know what's possible for me too because everyone starts from somewhere and a lot of the people that I work with are underdogs they've started from the ground up they've created millions of dollars you know from nothing they didn't come from money and you know they've been on this journey of self-discovery and personal development and on their grind and on their hustle and making their dreams a reality so for me it's it's so much fun to be around people who are playing a big game and one thing that a lot of these people have in common that you're hanging around is like they smashed their limiting beliefs around money and around and around abundance because they've achieved that massively in their life yep. where some of them are probably struggling is because they've smashed that area of their life which a lot of people on the other hand are struggling with but they might have not processed childhood emotions of feeling unloved or f- feeling lack in other areas of their life and it, we, every, it doesn't matter whether you are a celebrity or whether you are not a celebrity whether you just whether you're just a normal guy who's going to a carpentry job We've all got inherent stored things at cellular level that we have to process. And if, you, if you're not willing to process them today, maybe tomorrow or maybe the next day, but at some point in your life, in order for you to achieve anything that you so desire, 
you have to be willing to look into the darkness of yourself. Yeah, I think what a lot of people don't realize is some of the most successful people on the planet, whatever area they're in, they've used their trauma to get to where they are. And it's become the biggest motivator and the, the source of, you know, why they are so successful. But when you've created all of your dreams into reality, you have to then start to look at your trauma. Yeah. So what you, yeah, so what you're saying is essentially they've used the trauma as a, as an ignition to get them to the level that they always dream to get into. And then when they get to the, and they've lent the ladder against this wall and they've climbed to the top of this ladder and then they find out they feel empty at the top, that, that emptiness that they feel as a celebrity potentially is all predicated on the fact that it, it gave no fulfillment because it was just leading them away from a trauma rather than leading them to their truth. Right. hundred percent. Yeah, it's, it's, it's amazing. It's amazing how the the world, no matter what level you attain in this world, you can always be massively humbled by your own internal feelings. Yeah, that yeah. that 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 baffles me. That that is so profound. And when you just said that, I just realized that even when you can achieve so much, you can you could be left feeling completely Empty. like a vessel. Yeah, like a vessel. Yeah, wow. so true. But yeah, what, what in the next twelve months? What are your main goals of, of of what you want to create in this in this reality now mm. i think for me on a personal level is just being focused and having discipline practicing discipline around my goals and the things i want to achieve and primarily just being in my own personal alignment following the things that i know that i should be doing taking action on the things that i know that i should be doing and you know being in a state of joy while doing those things, not just ticking things off a list, not just you know doing things because I know that I should, I have to do those things, but now actually being enjoying the present moment, enjoying this moment right here, right now, and enjoying what I'm building, what I'm stepping into, what I'm creating. But I'm not just you know taking myself out of the present moment and projecting into this future. No, I want to enjoy the present moment. I want to relish in it. I want to be with it while I create and step into the things that I want to create. I was talking to you on the way to um, that event about living in Airbnbs and, and you said, to, what baffled me about that was that you said to me that you and Hella had lived in Airbnbs and on the road for like 10 years plus and you, yeah. and you were just, and you're now in your first place where you've been able to let you even buy a sofa and this, that and the other. So like just to see how much you've sacrificed yourselves in order to get to where you've got to is inspiring me on a personal level, bro. Like it's, it's mm. mental because like I think that is something that resonated with me straight away. I, I got out of the car and I was like, wow, like this is this is this is what you have to do. You have yeah. to burn all your ships to get to wherever you're going. Yeah. We lived out of a suitcase for ten years, just traveling the world to create awakened breath work to build the company that we have now. Like you, it was a grind, you know? And you never went out without food and you never no. you never you never got so skint that you couldn't continue, did you? No. So all those limiting right. beliefs that stop people from from traveling, that stop people from going in the pursuit of their greatness, which is that they'll go broke or that they'll they'll not find food or this that and the other or something will happen or shelter. Those three limiting beliefs that impact nearly ninety nine percent of all human beings. You've been around the world for ten years with 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 a, with a vision, but not not a, not a plan in terms of like you had the vision, but it wasn't always a plan of attack. And it's and you've and you've survived. <laughs> you know yeah, not just survived too. Moved from Thrived. surviving into thriving. In the first like you know five years of the business, we weren't making money. We were investing everything back into the business. But I knew that if we were to just keep going, that eventually things would turn around, and they did. I think on year seven, we made our first million dollars, and I remember that feeling wow, and bro. being like, you know, that's wow. that was a moment for us. And year seven, just listen to what Luke's has just said there. Year seven, he made his first million dollars. Year seven. that I want people to hear that because not many people say that. That is a truth that you can't unsee when you see that because everyone expects their first million in 12 months or, mm. or 24 months. It's just yeah. like... No, for know. us, it was a slow grind, you know, and we had to be willing to just keep going and to know that what we were doing was far bigger than any financial payout that we could receive. It was like a soul calling and we were being called from spirit to keep going and to keep stepping forward and to keep serving and to get out of our own way and our own doubts and our own fears and our own insecurities and move beyond all of that to for something greater, you know, to support people. 
And, you know, we've been abundantly supported along that journey, even when it wasn't working out how we wanted to, even how, how we wanted it to, even when things weren't exactly how we thought they should be. You know, things were always redirecting and, and moving in a direction that was getting us to where we are now, you know, and still where I want to go now. I have big aspirations and big goals and big dreams and it's easy for me to, you know, project into the future and and feel like I should be further ahead. But I have to remind myself of where I've come from and what I had to overcome and all the things that I've been through just to get to this present moment in time. And in doing that, I bring myself back into the present moment and back into connection with all that I've created. And from that space, I get to bring more love, more appreciation, more abundance into this moment right here right now and then that fulfills me to create what i'm creating i love that and i think i just want all of you to understand is like just give yourself some credit for taking yourselves as far as you have in your life right now and maybe stop trying to be so hard on yourselves you know because it's that that's something that i've struggled with and you know it's like okay why is why isn't my podcast uh at number one in every country in the world well it's mm-hmm. obviously not ready at the moment do you know what i'm saying it's like yes yeah. it, it, it's it's just you you're constantly judging yourself and as soon as i get back to this just be present in the conversation with lucas and just do one rep at a time yes and then do one rep and then do one rep and do one rep and just do the best that you can and if the conversation's good and you, you you touch people in the right way and you help people move through stuff, they'll share it, they'll do the right thing by you and it'll all work out. Yep. And that's and, and when you start getting into that feeling and you start aligning yourself with that, it's like how can you, you just can keep going forever. Like, the, that's how I've been able to manifest the opportunities that I have is not through my own self-centered desires of me, me, me and what I want. No, it's like what can I give? What can I contribute? What can I... Um, support other people with can i fulfill a need or de- or a desire or create a solution for someone or a breakthrough can i help someone in some way and then from there that creates an opportunity that i get to step into and be of you know service in but i think for me being of service has been been about stepping out of my own way yeah and as i stepped out of my own way for something greater then the doors opened right it was no longer about me it was about service to something greater and in that guess what the money flowed abundance opportunities come because i'm no longer just focusing on my own self-centered desires i'm actually starting to put into the field of what i want to create of what i want to be a part of of the solutions that i want to you know create in this world and through doing that it's opened up so many opportunities yeah and i, I love to see it and everything you've you've, you've both achieved has been absolutely mental and I just I just think doing that um with someone you actually care so much deeply about and traveling the world together and doing it has been has been a beautiful thing it's been a wild journey yeah yeah if I was gonna if we're gonna leave this podcast today and and you had to just leave one piece of advice one piece of golden wisdom that's going to move everyone in, in this audience that one percent further from today but you can't leave anything else what would it be for you mm. I think for me, what's coming through is when you start to go down your own path, whatever that might be, you decide the life that you want to create for yourself and you start to walk that path or go down that path. There's going to be a lot of people that don't see your vision, that don't agree with your vision or have something to say about it because it's not their vision. So I think it's really important to tune out the noise to tune out the distractions, to tune out the hate, to tune out the judgment, to tune out other people's projections of your own path and what you know is right for you and to really trust yourself and to go out there and to keep creating that momentum, to keep winning the day, to keep showing up and taking aligned action, to keep moving through those doubts, those fears, all of that stuff that might slow you down or stop you from going out and taking action just to stay on your path and to know that whatever you want to create is not only possible. If it's coming from your heart, if you feel passionate about it, passionate about it, then it truly is your birthright to create that into reality. And just to recognize that you can create whatever you want to. It's going to take hard work. It's going to take dedication. It's going to create, take letting go of the old to create the new, but you're capable of doing all of that. And anyone that says that you're not, tune them out, tune out the haters, tune out the noise 
and just keep going forward on your path because eventually all of that forward momentum is going to allow you to step in and create the reality that you most desire. And one of the greatest gifts that you can give to yourself is moving beyond the fears, moving beyond the self-doubt, moving beyond any insecurities or any parts of you that might tell you otherwise. And just to recognize that you are a creator and whatever you want to create is possible. So go out there and make it happen. I love it, man. I love it. I think if that doesn't move you further forward and and up, then I don't think anything will. But I hope you've all got a mad amount of value out of this episode. And if you could just do me a solid favor, and if you have got the value that I hope that you've got out of this, if you could share it on your social media and share it with other human beings that can listen to this and get some wisdom out of it. If, you know, if you're listening to this and it's hit your ears at the right time, there's other people out there in your network that could also benefit from this. If you just do me the favor of putting it in their ears, I'd appreciate it on, on a whole different level. But I hope you've enjoyed this episode. That is Lucas Mack. He's smashing life on all levels. And I'm looking forward to doing my breathwork journey with you, bro. Let's go. Because let's go to a whole new level. <laughs> but guys, like, subscribe, share the, share the content. I hope this serves you on every level. Much love. Much love, y'all. Guys, do me a solid favor. Drop a comment below this video and let us know who you want on the podcast next.